You know, we believe the Corazon Group is, was nearing the execution phase of an attack either in Europe or the homeland. Uh, we know that the Corazon Group has attempted to recruit Westerners to serve as operatives or to infiltrate back into their homelands. Well, that's Lieutenant General William Mayville, who's Joint Chief Director of Operations at the Pentagon, shortly after U.S. warplanes started hitting ISIS targets in Syria last week. And, of course, they're also aiming at that al-Qaeda spin-off group known as Khorashan. Well, our next guest says that he sounded the alarm about those terrorists six months ago, long before the public learned about the Khorashan terror group and what officials say is their imminent plan to attack us. Tom Jocelyn, senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, joins us. So, Tom... Why should we be so worried right now about the Khorasan Group? Well, everybody's been thrown for a loop by this name, the Khorasan Group, but really all it is is Al-Qaeda. It's just, it's Al-Qaeda, the same organization that struck us on 9-11. They've regenerated their leadership and they've expanded across the globe. You know, the, the Obama administration talks a lot about how there's this core of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and it's been decimated. Well, what we've shown over and over again is that there's, this isn't really, it's not really true. In fact, there's core Al-Qaeda operatives in several countries, including Syria. Well, let's take a look at what the president has said, you know, repeatedly over time, that al-Qaeda is on the run. Here's the president. Al-Qaeda is on the path to defeat and bin Laden is dead. Al-Qaeda is on its heels and Osama bin Laden is dead. Al-Qaeda is on the run. Osama bin Laden is dead. Al-Qaeda is on the run. I'll tell you where they ran to. They ran to Syria. Well, I mean, basically what happened is that the senior leadership of Al-Qaeda decided Syria was an optimal launching pad for these planned attacks against the West. And so they relocated a lot of their talented operatives there over the last two years. And so basically they're not really on the run. They've just been reestablishing their bases elsewhere. Now, of course, the intelligence community has been following them for, for a couple of years. How come they only made it public now with those airstrikes that surprised everybody? Um, well, part of it is because in the intelligence gathering process, you don't want to let everybody know what you're doing. So, you know, the, the intelligence community isn't going to come Makes out sense. and tell yeah. everybody what they're, who they're following. But they've been following one of the leaders of this group, Moussa Nafal. Kuwaiti. They've actually been tracking him on and off for more than a decade. He's someone who was known to plot against U.S. interests all the way back in 2002 and probably had foreknowledge of the 9 11 attacks. So these are guys who are experienced Al Qaeda veterans. And one of them has, what, a Twitter account with 25,000 <laughs> followers? That's right. Uh, Sanafi al Nazar, a Saudi who was one of the big leaders in this group, actually has a Twitter account. And until these airstrikes, he was very active on it on a daily basis. How do we kill him? Uh, well, these guys, it's going to come down to intelligence about their whereabouts, but they essentially knew that we were coming because if you remember, there were some press reports that came out the week before these, these airstrikes, basically saying this Coruscant group was something we needed to target. I think that tipped them off and gave them the head start to get out of town. And finally, do you think that it, it was effective? Um, the airstrikes? Yeah. I think the airstrikes were partially effective. I don't think they solved the problem overall. All right. Problem not solved, partially effective. The terror threat continues. Tom Jocelyn, thank you for joining us. Thank you.